about the reattenuation of epileptic procedures by Anderson's localization. So 
The model that uh, we use is called the metal scale particle model. It has each stochastic partial differential equation, which basically it governs the dynamics of the electrical activity of the brain in space and in time. And the stochastic uh, part is basically you will model the, the random fluctuations of the brain because the brain is, is very, you know, there are uh, chemical activities going on in the brain that's like random and seemingly just doesn't, uh, you can't really predict very well. So we model that with you know, probability distributions instead. And one of the key uh, characteristics of this model is called spatially uh, average variables, which I'll discuss in this slide. Uh, so basically, each neuron, uh, a long time ago, in, 19, in the 1950s, each neuron were, uh, was uh, modeled by the hodgkin huxley equations, which very, very, which was very successful, it won a Nobel Prize, and it was very successful at uh, describing the dynamics of a single, the electrical dynamics of a single neuron. But the problem is, Brain is filled with billions of neurons, and it would be really you know, impractical to use those set of equations on every single neuron. So instead, we, uh, you know, past researchers have introduced a notion called the spatially average variable, which model every uh, which where we group neurons into large populations, and based on and then based on their characteristics, uh, they are governed by different equations. But in the end, there's only eight that comes up. So the analogy is. When we talk about gases, we never uh, in the kinetic theory of gases, we never discuss every single individual particle. We instead talk about the average of the entire you know, body of uh, gas instead. Okay. And random inputs are numerically approximated by normal distribution for uh, for simulations. And so, uh, in the model, in, in all the models that govern neurons, we must describe how the neuron fires. So. This is, a, this is a neuron, a typical neuron, okay? And the voltage inside, uh, between the inside and the outside of the, of the, uh, the cell body is called the solar potential. And the neurons only fire at a specific frustral potential in which they, they have electroactivity and they send signals. And remember that since a single neuron has a specific uh, frustral potential, but since we are considering large populations of neurons instead, you add all these step functions up because a step function can be a a good way of modeling the threshold potential, and in the end, you end up with this S-shaped curve to model uh, your population of neurons. That, and this will be very important yeah, for localization. So first, let me show you a quick video of how seizures are formed. So I let the model uh, begin at pretty much equilibrium states. So in effect, if there are no small variations, it would not make seizures, and uh, let it run, basically. And two things I want you want to you want to see, there will be two regions which will start oscillating. But one will die out, while one will continue creating traveling waves and seizures. Okay. So you can see on the left, it slowly dies out, but the right creates more uh, oscillation, and eventually the entire, you could, this is in effect a uh, one-dimensional version of the brain where we you can uh, model the brain as a stream of electrodes. You can think of it as if I were to take a bunch of electrodes and just make one circle around my head instead of every, at every single point. And this is what we do over here. And in two dimensions, it's basically I take, uh, you could model it as you take the brain, you uh, make it flat, for instance, it's a plane instead, it's a flat plane instead, and let it, you know, same, same procedure, you let it run from equilibrium, and then see what happens. And here is really interesting is that the waves are actually in spirals. You see that spiraling out over time? Okay. So basically these are seizures and we don't want these things to happen, okay? Okay, so let's talk about localization. So it's a concept from solid state physics where basically waves propagating in a disordered medium will not diffuse. So if you consider the ocean, okay? Uh, when you go to the ocean, the seabed is very, very smooth and the waves that come along, they just, you know, they don't, they're like plain waves practically, they just kind of go onto the shore very peacefully. But if you are in like a, 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 a notion with like very rough seabed, let's say a bunch of rocks or something like that at the bottom, what will happen is you have a plane wave that comes in, and then when it reaches the obstacles, the obstacles will scatter the wave, and once it scatters the wave, it creates more waves, and those waves will start interfering with the original wave, and what you have in, in the end is you'll start slowing the wave down and making it less, uh, making it attenuated. So you can see those two cases uh, with no random seabed. You know, and it trucks along fine, but if it has run and see that it won't go very far, it will start, start dying out. 
Okay, so we want to figure out a way to randomize some of the parameters in the model. So remember the previous uh, equation. So you can think of it as this. So you have you have this graph. Okay? Uh, S max is like the maximum is the maximum firing rate of a population of neurons. Uh, theta is like the average threshold potential, and G is kind of like because you have so many neurons, you're not going to have the same spread. If you have a larger spread of neurons, larger spread of neurons, then then the slope will be very uh, small. So we want to, these are fixed parameters in the original model, so we want to randomize these. So you might choose this one, or you might choose this one, to move around, or you might want to change the slope a bit. Okay. Okay, so in particular, uh, if, we, if we randomize the threshold potential, what you'll see is that the seizures will be attenuated. So same simulation, but, I, but basically at three seconds at the top, you will see I apply localization, which basically I randomize one of the parameters and let the entire simulation uh, attend it. Okay, so seizures are going along, and once we reach three seconds, it just dies out. And this is just in time. So basically what I do is, I, these parameters usually are fixed, but I make them a function of time, but not of space. So throughout space, they are constant. So what you'll see is, localization. Uh, uh, attenuation only time, uh, but that's good enough. And you can see that once at three seconds, uh, seizures seizures start forming from zero to three seconds. And then once at three seconds, I follow the and you can see that the, the synchronous activity is gone. So seizures, seizures are gone. And if you look at total energy, uh, this is a ratio to maximum energy of the uh, of the of the seizure wave. And once we reach three seconds, we apply the turn on localization, and you'll see that the, uh, the energy drops off really quickly. So some that, that was just for the one-dimensional model. So the next, some of the next steps we want to do is apply localization to the 2D model. And after we do that, we can figure out, uh, you know, study localization bit analytically, see if there's like a, like a optimi optimization, uh, optimized uh, spread that we would like instead. And finally, we need to find a mechanism to actually apply the localization because Right now, all I've shown is I make one parameter random, and what happens is we see localization, but I never told you exactly how to change that parameter. But that's something that we want to investigate as well. And finally, this is not the only good model of the brain, so we might want to see, consider other models and see whether or not that localization is actually achieved in other models as well. All right, so conclusions. Just, so the, uh, the takeaways of this presentation would be, so the mental scale model successfully models seizures, and that we can actually successfully successfully attenuate seizures by randomizing the average threshold potential. All right, thank you very much for your time. Um, so I wasn't quite clear how to make the, the jump from the, the metaphor of the seabed with the sort of rocky shore and the turbulence that attenuates the, the oncoming waves to how that actually exists within the brain. How do you introduce, what exactly is introducing localization in the context of a brain, which is sort of this, this thing that you can't like randomize parameters? It, yes, yeah, so uh, I can randomize parameters on my computer really easily, but in, in like on, uh, when we want to figure out a way to try find mechanism, that's what we're always talking about. So there's a, uh, there's a few ways that we're kind of hypothesize, hypothesizing exactly how to randomize those parameters. One way is never investigated uh, how acoustical waves affect neuron firings and see if that has any effect on it or it might be just a combination of acoustical waves and electromagnetic waves that actually uh, is able to change the threshold potential of neurons instead. But that's something that we want to, we really want to also, we really want to investigate because that's really crucial to the next step of this project. It sounds like you said that if you have the, the wave going through a rocky sea bed, that they wouldn't diffuse. You're saying that they would diffuse if it's going through a rocky sea bed, right? They, they wouldn't diffuse. They wouldn't diffuse. They, they would. They would like. They would tend to stay in one position. If you go back, uh, if I can go back to that picture, basically you see that it's not. They get stuck in effect. The they get stuck in one location, and because of all the uh, the, the random sea bed on the and so what happens is. When it gets stuck, then it creates more uh, other waves that interfere with the original wave, and then eventually it just doesn't move very well. So, so, so it, it, it destroys 
Yeah, it destroys it at that one. It, it destroys it and it doesn't let it move anywhere very far. And then second question, what, what are the variables, the various variables that you that you uh, are randomized? Randomized. Right. So there are three variables that we can uh, rap, we can that are that that's possible to randomize. One is the maximum firing rate of a population of neurons. Uh, one is the average threshold potential of those neurons. And the third one is basically trying to, because yeah, it's trying to the, the slope of the firing rate, which is basically saying how, uh, what, how, what kind of a spread do the neurons have. Because if they have a very large spread of threshold potentials, then what happens is that the S-shaped curve will be very, very flat. But if they are all very tightly together, then they will be very, very vertical. So we want to change that, as we, that we could possibly change that as well. Okay, so, so that would be S, G, and H, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay.